Peace. This is your host, Lady J, and you're with Atlanta Mom Circle. We have a special guest today, my friend, Mildred Morris. Say hi, Mildred. Hello, guys. And um, today's topic, we're going to talk about how important it is for kids to learn home organization, how it assists with brain development, as well as character development. Um, Mildred has a YouTube channel called Behind Closed Doors. We're going to leave a link to her channel um, in this video here, but she specializes in home decor projects, home design, do-it-yourself projects, and also she has, her and her family specialize in seamstress work, so they can make pillows, they can make anything you can think about. This is your girl right here. So Mildred, how, what other channels can they find you on? So we've got YouTube, Behind Closed Doors. Yes, and I also could be found on Instagram at Behind Closed Doors 888. Um, I'm also on Facebook, Behind Closed Doors. And my email address um, is bcdoors8888 at gmail.com. Okay, girl, so let's get started. This is going to be fun. So we talked about how important organization is to your kids, right? Yes. Um, what age can parents start teaching their kids organization skills? Um, I think that um, seriously um, teaching your kids about organization begins at the age of four. However, some kids are very bright, you know, in these times. So mm -hmm. some of them can learn a, a little earlier, but usually a four-year-old um, could follow directions better and the mobile skills are better. They understand um, a task that is given to them and how to begin that task and how to finish a task. So I would say at the age of four, you want to begin um, teaching your child how to organize their space. Yeah, you know, I think, I think that's what I did with my daughter um, by the time she was four years old. Um, I got tired of cleaning up behind her, to be quite honest, because she would pretty much, she would trash the room, okay? And I got to retiring, so I'm like, you know what, if you're old enough, you're potty trained, you can speak the English language, you can make yourself, you can steal some cookies. Yes, right. Then you can get in there and get that toy box and pick those things up off the floor. So yeah, so four yes. is good, so I, was, so I was on track, basically. Yes, you were on track. Four is great. Um, however, if you notice, a lot of kids attend daycare and the first thing they teach the kids is clean up, clean up. Those are just, um, you know, mobile skills to put stuff in a certain area and put it together, which is the beginning of organizing for a child. Absolutely. But they're having fun with it that they don't even realize that that is exactly what's happening. They're being taught how to um, complete a task how to come together with other people, with so other team, children, so teamwork. Yes, um, how mm -hmm. to um, get that job done um, once the teacher gives them the instructions on what to do. They just think it's fun, you know, like Barney, you know. I remember growing up, um, well, my children when I was younger and mm -hmm. raising them, they're grown now. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a teenage daughter. We were in her room, as you can see. It's so beautiful <laughs> in here. She designed everything that you see, by the way. She painted the walls and everything. <laughs> Yes, I do it all, guys. So please come and check out, check me out on my YouTube channel, um, Behind Closed Doors. Just be sure to type in Mildred at the end of it, or you can visit my Facebook page, and you can click on any YouTube link there, and it'll direct you straight over to my page. I would love to have you become a golden key. So you've pretty much already started on answering the next question I was going to segue into, and that was how can learning organizational skills assist with brain development? So you were talking about in daycare and how they teach them um, how to recognize patterns. So when they make a mess or they play around mm -hmm. and they have items like toys on the floor, they said, okay, this box are for the rubber toys. Mm -hmm. This box are for maybe like the, the furry, fuzzy things. Yes. So so they're learning pattern making or how to recognize patterns. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, geometrical shapes. Yes. Squares go with squares, circles go with circles. 
So we're talking about geometry. We're talking about teamwork because they're learning how to work with the other children, right? Yes, 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 ma'am. Um, it's teaching them decision making, basically. It teaches them how to make a decision as to what goes together, where to put that stuff at. Um, it helps to assist them in decision making as they grow up. Mm -hmm. um, even preparing their book bag um, for school and have making sure that they have their books all together. The understanding how to pair something together to complete a task basically. You know you need a pencil, a notebook, an eraser, or some crayons to go to school to learn so you're prepared for school, right? So automatically those things set the tone for learning. And that's basically what you're doing when you're showing your right. kids how to organize. Yeah. You're setting the tone for how to function in that space. Mm -hmm. Okay, the same way the teachers have them clean out their desks. Because they want them to be neat and prepared for the lesson. They don't want you to be scrambling through your desk looking for a pencil, looking for uh, your notebook, looking for the book. Everything should be neatly organized so you'll know just grab that and that and that's how you keep things on task. So it's basically making our job easy as parents um, to function at home in the space that, that the kids surviving because their room is their space yeah you know absolutely. you have to have a closet that has hangers in it so they know when you take off your clothes or when your laundry is done you hang up your clothes in the closet the clothes that don't belong on the floor i still have a teenager she still puts her clothes on the floor even though i provide hangers for her my husband does the same thing expect that <laughs> expect grown. that but trust me when i tell you i'm sure i probably did the same thing when i was a kid but trust me as they grow older and they're out on their own they will use those skills they will realize that they can't even function on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Even us as grown-ups, you know, right. if the house is out of order or something, we're having a hard time functioning. Even the brain. I, yeah, it aggravates yeah. my anxiety when I come in and yes. I see dishes in the sink and I see toys on the floor. I, yeah, like I said, cleanliness is next to godliness, right? Yeah. So I we looked at looked at it as when you keep your space clean you're keeping the demons out yes or whatever so and that's what I tell kids you it's good for your mental health we've seen a show on TV called Hoarders and you see how the chaos the emotional chaos that that family is in because the house is out of mm -hmm. order and you can't find anything you can't yes. function and it's, and it's overall it's good for our mental health when our kids keep their space clean right yes. and when we keep our own space clean as adults right yes because it it affects the brain. It prevents the brain from retrieving information and it also prevents the brain from um, storing that information, any information retrieved, because it's just all over the place. You're all over the place. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Like if, if, if things is just not put together, you're basically all over the place. You know, sometimes things may get out of place, but as long as it has a place, sometimes then you know. Sometimes it's that your brain can exactly. recall and it's like clockwork, Exactly. Right? Uh -huh. It's like it, it, it becomes programmed uh -huh. so that, okay, the books go over there. So when I'm looking for a book, the book is there. The book is there. When I'm looking for toys, the toys is in this toy box. Exactly. If I'm looking for this, this is there. Do you, I know we go through this. Can you go in there and get such and such? Oh, I can't find it. I can't I find it. I get so it. aggravated with my kids. Why like you can't find it? Because you didn't put it because back in the Because stuff is all area. over the place. Mm -hmm. You didn't place that item back where it belonged. Right. So as parents, we have to set the room or the areas of the home that is for children. We have to make it functionable for them. We have to make it be able to flow and function for them by providing things for them to get organized in. And you know, speaking of organization, um, I have this rule in my house, and I'm real big about um, s the safety aspect of being organized. At night, when my kids go to bed, I tell them, I sh "Mommy should always have a direct path to your bed." So, God forbid, if a fire happens, or in the state of an emergency, I'm not tripping over toys to get to you. 
your bed when you go to sleep at night it should be completely clear so I'm ready to run in there and snatch you and go if there's a fire or something takes place I'm not stumbling over toys and kicking yes. things out the way and that is one big rule that we have in our house I tell my kids I don't care how tired you are yes. if you are about to go to bed you do not leave toys on the floor in front of your bed mommy needs to be able to get to you or daddy needs to be able to get to you in the state of emergency well, if there's a fire sleep, uh, that's something very you. important so my kids know <laughs> if they're asleep i will wake them up i say you better get out of this bed you better pick these things up because yeah. if the house catches fire god forbid you never know yeah organization has a, a safety aspect to yes. it too that's why when you work in a warehouse they'll they'll have all these rules regarding safety and spills and putting things back and don't leave things on the floor yes. so somebody can trip and fall or hurt themselves you can break a bone you can sprain something i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it all starts from an early age and trust me, see, you dealing with toys now. When they become teenagers, you deal with clothes. Why are the clothes on the floor when I provide a hamper for you? You know, why mm -hmm. are there clothes on the floor when I provide hangers for you to hang them up? You know, they have to understand um, after being told thousands and thousands and thousands of times never that lie. stuff <laughs> belongs where it belongs. But the one thing I know is once you teach your child how to care for their space, trust and believe when they go to someone else's space that's out of order, they will be quick to identify that that space is out of order. Mm -hmm. They will quick to tell you, Mom, did you see that? Oh my God. They had the stuff all under the beds. They had this and that. They'll be quick to identify that mm -hmm. because they're, they're used to their space being set up a certain way. However, if they if they don't learn how to maintain that space, it can spill over into what they just seen that was seen out of place to them. Right. You know, right. they 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 can either but if you don't stay on top of them as a parent and say pick that up, do that, do this, I'm still doing it. My daughter's 15. I'm still doing it. Why is that on the floor? Why is this this? I go and I get these things for you to put it where it belongs. Why are those things not there? But it's okay because trust me, when she becomes an adult, she will care for her space. She, I've seen it, okay? <laughs> I have seen it when p p kids, as kids, didn't care and you go in their house today and you're like, wow. Mm -hmm. grown folks because you learn you learn that you function better in an organized space yes you certainly do and you know with that said I want to move into the next segment of mm -hmm. questions before we wrap and it's called letting go um, I have two questions that I think that we should kind of look into and talk about um, the importance of letting go so um when it comes to letting go, what are some what are some lessons that kids can learn as it pertains to letting go of their old items? There are um, a couple of things it teaches the kids. Um, it teaches them how to give mm -hmm. in the process of letting go. It teaches them how to share in the process of letting go. Yeah, it teaches right. them um, how to clean a space, how to sort. So it teaches them all of those things overall when you t when you teach your child how to let go. I find that sometimes it's not even the child that has the issue with letting go. It's more so the parents. A lot of us look um, at it from an angle of, I spent all my money on this and I can't give this thing away. I paid too much money for it. Mm -hmm. But if your child isn't utilizing that item anymore, um, or is too small for that kid to wear, why not pass it on to someone else who can benefit from it? You, you get what I'm saying? Would yes. you rather just keep looking at something that you felt, that you feel, you paid a lot of money for and not see it being used, or give it to someone who can use it and feel better that you did something by giving it, Absolutely. number one, and another mm -hmm. child is benefiting from something that your child could no longer use. So is it teaches them how to give, um, and the the sharing part, how to share with others. Because as you're teaching your child how to organize, 
you're just not in there saying, okay, let's do this, do this, do that, do that, put this here, do it. Have fun with it. Um, create, talk to them as you're doing this project. Oh, you know we're doing this because we're trying to help our neighbor such and such. You know, I know that this is too small for you. And you know, little Cindy, she can fit these things. So Absolutely. we want little yeah. Cindy to enjoy this like you enjoyed it, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to create a comfortability with it with giving these things away and sorting through these things with your child. You don't mm -hmm. want them to seem like you just came into their space and you're just taking, 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 taking things away from them. Cause then they will become the type that would not want to let go. You know, mm -hmm. it will be hard for them to let go because they'll feel like they're losing, they're losing something. something yeah. But in reality, they're gaining something. They're gaining a clutter-free room, <laughs> so space to think in. Um, they're gaining um, a love for helping others, you know, and how it feels, because there is no other feeling like giving. There is really, sincerely, no other feeling like giving, even Absolutely. as an adult. When yes. you give, that's when you feel at your best. It's the energy is just awesome. You're just awesome. It's, it's like you're overwhelmed with tears and, and you're happy. Oh, wow. And you can think clearer when you get rid of some of them things. Like, you know, honey, we're not going to, we, we're just going to leave it with the kids right now. But we know the adults with the pocketbooks and the shoes yes. and the clothes. Okay. Because we all do it. Excess hair products. Yes. First national yes. Snow product junkies. Yes. So it, it's the same thing. It's uh, um, even as an adult, you have to learn to let go of those things. You have to show your children that you're willing to let go of things too. Look, mommy's gonna go through her closet. Do you want to help? Um, help me get rid of some of this stuff. I'm gonna donate this to to this person, this person, because kids like to mimic their parents. Yeah. So when they see you doing that, giving and and sorting through your things, then they're gonna want to do their room next. Okay, mommy, can we do mine next? I can get my toy. I can give this to Peter or Jean. Yeah. You know, they're more. Yeah, I always tell them, I tell them those kids really do, doesn't mm -hmm. always, they don't do what you say as much as they do what, what you, you do. Yeah. And I always tell people that they mimic your behavior mm -hmm. more so than your words. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 they certainly do. So what are some, um, you know, sometimes you may have a, a child that's a little bit more strong willed or maybe they just have an emotional attachment to things. Mm -hmm. So how can we persuade them to let go like how can we persuade them to do it and it not be such a tug of war sometimes we have to I so let me call it, it manipulate you want to say positive reinforcement yes okay. um and sometimes okay if we do this then i know you love Chuck E. cheese I know you love to go to, um, what's the other place the kids go to? Leaping Lizard. Kids are, my kids Leaping love Leaping Lizard. Yes. You love to go to all these other places. So if we get to do this, then we can get to do this that you enjoy doing. Exactly. You know, I can take you here. We can get rid of this stuff here, and I can take you here. Okay? Mm -hmm. But right now, we have to focus on this this at hand the task at hand let's get this together and then if you do a good job with getting this together we can go to leaping lizard we can go to chuck e cheese day we can have a movie day catch air yes. that's another place like leaping lizard is a kids activity okay it's actually really fun even for adults okay. it's like a club catch air is like a club for children Oh, okay. And my kids, cool. I've never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, they have one. They have like one in Marietta, and I think they, I don't. I think the other one was in Duluth, if it's still open. But yeah, so you're right. So having positive reinforcements, like okay, their favorite activities of things that they like to do, yes. in exchange for doing the right thing, Same. that's letting go of their old toys or some of their old clothes, yes. things that they don't use anymore, accessories that they're a teenager. They may have old jewelry that's just sitting there. Yes. So. Yeah. And if, and you will find that kids are more acceptable to it than you think. Um, just the other day, I was at my friend's house. I went to help out a friend. 
and I was in her son's room and I had he had these bins in there these little small bins and he had a bunch of toys and I said okay this is what we're gonna do let's um get this together we're gonna have this bag here this bag here is for things that you don't want and this bin is for things that you do want so what's going in the garbage what are we getting rid of today okay what is it that you don't play with and you don't like we're gonna put it in this bag and the things that you want to keep we're gonna put it in this bin so they will feel that they're in control of what they give away and what they keep for themselves so it's kind of like you're giving them control of the situation to make that decision which is good because it teaches them decision making skills okay okay so it's not like you're just you're going in there and you're just taking over I'm throwing this away I'm throwing this away I'm throwing this that that gotta go that gotta go you're letting them be a part of the process which can help them as well be more at ease in letting go. Okay. Right, right. All right, so the last question that I have, and you pretty much already touched on it, um, was, you know, some, what are some places and organizations that we can donate some of the kids old items to? And I'll start with, with me for me. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> if I'm, if there isn't a nearest relative or a friend around that I can donate my kids old items to, then I usually turn to the local, non like a smaller nonprofit, like maybe like your church, if they have a ministry where they give back to the community. Um, I do Goodwill. I know Goodwill is one of the big ones, so I, I donate. I've donated like pounds, <laughs> pounds and pounds of clothes and toys to Goodwill. I mean, I, if I can find, and I know it's a lot about research, find another organization mm -hmm. that I can give it to where I can see see them really using mm -hmm. it. Because I don't know where my clothes go once I give it to Goodwill. I know it's supposed to go on the rack, mm -hmm. but I, I, after that, it's out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that? Um, that's wonderful. Um, that's what those organizations are out there for. Um, it depends on who who's giving this stuff away. What's your preference? Um, where would you like to see those goods go? Um, there are, like she said, there's organizations like Goodwill, Army. Salvation mm -hmm. Army, excuse me, Salvation Army, where you can um, take belongings that you don't like. Um, they how resell about, them. How about Dress for Success? Yeah. Can you still, because I remember that was one of the organizations that worked in tandem with the nonprofit that for we grown, worked there. Yeah, for the adults, for you to take the stuff there for the adults and stuff. So, yes. okay. Or try your local your local daycare centers. Try daycare centers for toys. Sometimes they're looking for... You know, um, I never thought about the daycare center yeah. thing, right? Mm-hmm. They okay. use it because they have children there sometimes. You might have toys that your child never even opened. And they outgrew it, you know, and you can donate those things or lightly used um, things, even to schools. Um, a lot of these schools have programs, you'd be surprised, they have programs like closets where other students who don't have things can go in there and get stuff. Because a lot of kids, you know, you never know what's going on at home. Right. And they don't have things. They don't have a sweater. You know, they I don't have things. I have so never, they have I've never looked into that, that before, but um, that's a good idea. So you were saying that some of the elementary schools, yes. I, I homeschool my kids, so yes. I'm a little out of the loop, but some elementary schools have mm -hmm. programs where you could donate some of your, your kids' old clothing and stuff to. Yes. And the shelters are must, are shelters, homeless shelters for, for families. Um, Those are my favorite places to actually donate too. to, more me so than too. the Goodwills. I, I remember in my hometown when I used to donate um, things to the local crisis. Mm -hmm. They call it crisis ministry for women and children. Mm -hmm. um, I would just they said I would just set my bags and things yeah. down there and walk away from it. And because mostly when you work in that atmosphere, you get a feel of what really goes on. So you get a you can see exactly what's behind the scenes and you know that these mothers and these fathers because sometimes it's the father the head of the household and um you get to really see how how much of a difficult time they're having at the time you know they're just walking through their storm they'll get through it however um they're not able to go out and purchase those items for their kids so in giving it to them you definitely know that someone is going to use those items yeah. and care. And they're going to care for those items. Exactly. You know, they're definitely going to care for them. So I would just say just check out 
um, the local organizations in your area, um, ch churches, shelters, um, the daycares, the school the system. School system yeah. um, check it out. I believe they have like telephone numbers too. If you're not sure, 411, right? 411. Yeah, for United Way. And you can and they'll call direct and they'll you. direct you to some of those organizations mm -hmm. um, that you can call and speak to or someone, a co worker can um tell you if you just bring it up in conversation you'd be surprised um how information gets around there like yeah i know where they can take that at they'll come and pick it up and all kinds of things so okay yeah, cool. it's out here you know organizations and needs um in need they're out here okay cool so um so i think that just about wraps up our segment regarding teach the importance of teaching your kids organization skills and letting go. Um, are there any other closing words you would like to add thus far regarding letting go, organization, or just any other anything you think that's important? It's important to teach and instill in your child organizational skills. They will need that throughout their life, from school age on up. It teaches them to be focused. It teaches them to stick to a task. It helps them to retrieve information and it helps them to develop, okay? So I would say the best time to start is at an early age. It's at age four, right? Yes, Okay. age four and some kids even before that time um, because the kids today, child, they know more than me. <laughs> 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 so the earlier the better it's just it's a task mothers and fathers it is a task keeping on top of it keeping up with them continuing to say the same things over and over for some of the children however it will pay off in the long run you will see it through their schoolwork their performance their behavior in school um even the way they um maintain their belongings that you purchase for them and spend all your money for how well they take care of their stuff. Mm -hmm. so it will teach them the value of helping others it will teach them the value of just being being a, a good person and a good, and yeah. a good samaritan yeah all right guys so that wraps it up this is um atlanta mom circles in collaboration with Behind Closed Doors with Mildred Morris. Behind Closed Doors. All right, guys. <laughs> um, so uh, have a good afternoon and happy house.